Oh my God, one is thirsty in the desert and what to drink but Coke. The perfect commodity, why? It was already Marx who long ago emphasized that a commodity is never just a simple object that we buy and consume. A commodity is an object full of theological, even metaphysical niceties. Its presence always reflects an invisible transcendence. And the classical publicity for Coke quite openly refers to this absent, invisible quality. Coke is the real thing, or Coke, that's it. What is that it, the real thing? It's not just another positive property of Coke, something that can be described or uh, pinpointed through chemical analysis. Is that mysterious something more? <laughs> the undescribable excess, which is the object cause of my desire. In our postmodern, however we call them, societies, we are obliged to enjoy. Enjoyment becomes a kind of a weird, perverted duty. The paradox of Coke is that you are thirsty, you drink it. But as everyone knows, the more you drink it, the more thirsty you get. A desire is never simply the desire for a certain thing. It's always also a desire for desire itself, a desire to continue to desire. Perhaps the ultimate horror of a desire is to be fully filled in met, so that I desire no longer. The ultimate melancholic experience is the experience of a loss of desire itself. It's not that in some return to an, a previous era of natural uh, consumation where we got rid of this excess and were only consuming for actual needs like you were thirsty, you drank water and so on. We cannot return to that. The excess is with us forever. So let's have a drink of Coke. It's getting warm. It's no longer the real Coke, and that's the problem. You know, this passage from sublime to excremental dimension. When it's cold, properly served, it has a certain attraction, all of a sudden, this can change into shit. It's the elementary dialectics of commodities. We are not talking about objective, factual properties of a commodity. We are talking only hear about that elusive surplus. Kinder surprise egg. A quite astonishing commodity. The surprise of the kinder surprise egg is that this excessive object, the cause of your desire, is here materialized in the guise of an object, a plastic toy, which fills in the inner void of the chocolate egg. The whole delicate balance is between these two dimensions, what you bought, the chocolate egg, and the surplus, probably made in some Chinese gulag or whatever, the surplus that you get for free. I don't think that the chocolate frame is here just to send you on a deeper voyage towards the inner treasure, the, what Plato calls the agalma, which makes you a worthy person, which makes a commodity the desirable commodity. I think it's the other way around. We should aim at the higher goal, the goal in the middle of an object, precisely in order to be able to enjoy the surface. This is what is the anti-metaphysical lesson which is difficult to accept. <laughs>